there's probably been a time in your life where you're like, gee, I wonder how Viagra works. Well, I'm going to tell you and how it relates to amino acids. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over amino acids 10, 11, and 12. These are known as the positively charged R groups. Just a little heads up, or to preface, when I mean amino acids 10, 11, 12, this is not the, I'm making up these numbers. What I mean by that, there are 20 amino acids, but I'm, na I'm basically numbering these from easiest to hardest, what I think is easiest to hardest. So when, if you like think about, it's not saying that this is amino acid number 10 in the actual official list. No, 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 no. I am giving it the number, num you know, 10. But the actual abbreviation is, you know, the letter. That's how you define these amino acids. So it's the first one. Lysine is the first amino acid, rather the 10th amino acid we're going to talk about. It's abbreviated with the K. So we got our usual crap as the other nine amino acids. We got our alpha carbon, hydrogen, carboxyl amino group. Now for the R group. It's literally a long chain of CH2s with an NH3 at the end. So it's a CH2, that's one, CH2, that's a two, CH2, that's a three, CH2, that's a four. So four CH2s. This is ended by NH3 and notice the positive charge. That, that goes for, you know, that's why I said it's the positively charged R group. So you're probably wondering why I drew this. So we're going to call this guy Timmy. Timmy is feeling emasculated. Because he thought his body is like the best body that could have ever lived. It makes all 20 essential amino acids. And he is buff, he is strong, he's, you know, whatever. Well, Timmy just learned his body cannot make lysine. What does this mean? Well, why am I saying this? So the human body is not able to produce lysine. It's impossible. Our bodies are not able to synthesize lysine. And lysine is an essential amino acid. All amino acids are important, but not all of them are essential. This means that lysine is essential to live. Some amino acids are not essential. It's meaning you can go, you can live a normal, well, you can live without having it. So, how do you get lysine then? Well, through animal products, mainly. So red meat and fish have high amounts of lysine in them. There are vegetarian ways of getting lysine, but they don't have, they're not abundant. So one of them is beans. Beans and soy have lysine in them. They don't have high amounts, like compared to animal products, but they do have some. Eggs as well has lysine, not too much as, you know, meat, but it's, it's there. So Timmy here was like, damn, I thought I made lysine, but he doesn't. And he's feeling emasculated. <laughs> it's dumb. Okay, let's forget about this one. 11. Arginine, with an abbreviated as an R. So we got our usual stuff, and we got our R group. The R group is literally the same, you know, CH2 chains, but it's a little bit different. So we got 1 CH2, 2 CH2, 3 CH2s. The 4th CH2, remember in uh, light and lysine over here, we had a 4th CH2, right? Here we don't. Here's an NH, actually. This NH is now bonded to a carbon. This carbon now has four bonds. It has the double bond from the NH2 here, the original NH3 is talked about in NH2 here. This NH2 has the positive charged. So why are we talking about now arginine here? So arginine, so this is the whole Viagra thing I'm gonna talk about here now. This is why I mentioned the beginning of the video. So let's, let's back up for a second. There's something in your body called nitric oxide. This is not nitrous oxide, okay? Nitrous oxide is what you put in cars to make it go faster. If you see Fast and Furious, right? That's nitrous. No, not this. This is nitric oxide, different. To make nitric oxide in your body, you need arginine. 
So this is kind of how Viagra comes into play. Let me give you a little history of how Viagra came to be. If you did not know, Viagra was never always for erectile dysfunction. It was actually for blood pressure. So when Viagra was invented, it was only for females. And females would take it if they had high blood pressure. They noticed that females take Viagra and they had high blood pressure, it would actually lower their blood pressure. So it was a blood pressure medication. No man ever took Viagra. It was only made for women. It was until, of course, a man tried Viagra and dun dun, got an erection. So what ended up happening is they basically ditched the whole female blood pressure part of Viagra and now advertises anti, anti, um, anti um, to help with the erectile, erectile dysfunction, basically. So how does this nitric oxide come to, into play? Well, what happens, the very brief overview, is that when you take Viagra, it causes nitric oxide to bind to blood vessels in the penis, which causes vasodilation of the blood vessels, and that causes the erection. Kind of interesting, right? Does this mean if you had an arginine deficiency in your body that you can get erections? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I didn't do the research on that, but maybe. Yeah, isn't drugs amazing? Well, how it works. I'll make you guys a deal. So what about this? If I, if we can maybe get like 500 subscribers or 1,000 subscribers, I'll make a video on how Viagra works and the whole mechanism of action. I find it interesting. I think you guys find it interesting too. And let's do this. How about every milestone, like a huge milestone, we'll do a, a new drug video. We're gonna, I'm just gonna have a whole playlist of drugs and how it works. Let's do, let's just do maybe 1,000 subscribers. Let's do cocaine, 5,000 meth. Right, we're in a whole Heisenberg thing. Um, maybe ten, like twenty thousand. We do MDMA. I don't know something like that. I don't know. Okay, Molly. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna have a whole drug playlist. Let's do that. I think that's gonna be fun. I mean, I'll find that fun. But <laughs> let's do this one now. Twelve. Histidine with an H. Usual crap, right? Alpha carbon, hydrogen carboxyl amino group. Okay, so this R group is different. Histidine for the R group has a CH2. That now that is bounded to a carbon. Now this carbon is in a ring-like structure. This carbon is bonded to an NH group. This NH group is bounded to a CH, which is double bonded to a nitrogen, which is bounded to a CH, which is double bonded to the carbon we talked about. Now, if you're wondering, where is the plus charge. Where's the positive charge? Well, the positive charge exists when this nitrogen is protonated. So if, it, if a hydrogen comes in and binds to it, now it gets the positive charge. But we, I'm writing this without the positive charge. But if it just gets protonated, then it gets the positive charge. The nitrogen gets the positive charge. Probably wondering why I have Benadryl here. So Benadryl is an antihistamine. What's a histamine? When you get an allergic reaction, rather the allergic reaction, let me back up for a second. So you get allergic to something. Your body releases something called histamines to counter what's going on. And you usually feel crappy. So that's why you take an antihistamine, so you don't have those allergic reactions. So you don't get like watery eyes or whatever. So the reason you have watery eyes is because of histamine. But here's something you probably did not notice. Let's write it in green. Is the actual name antihistamine. Antihistamine. You just probably look at it as, oh, a hand antihistamine. But you've probably never actually broken up the word. So first we have anti, which is like against. Then we've got a hist, which is like histidine, the amino acid. That's, that means histidine. And we've got amine as an NH2. So what this literally translates to is antihistamine is literally a histidine with an NH2 group attached to it. That's what, an, that's what antihistamine is. Is rather, that is what a, histi, what a histi, 
I am now. Like <laughs> English is hard. Histamine is a histidine with an NH2. Okay. So you would probably well you the other way you can say this is histamine. Right? Histamine or histamine is histidine with an NH2. And antihistamine is like anti this, like against. Isn't it cool how when you look at words, they have like, you get a whole different meaning from it. So let me give you a cool another example here. Clothes, your t-shirt. Probably heard of polyester. Your t-shirts are made of polyester. Have you ever wondered how the name polyester actually came to be? Poly means many. And ester is a functional group in organic chemistry. So you're, what polyester is, is just many functional groups. Your t-shirt is just made up of many ester functional groups. Isn't that funny? Isn't that cool when you actually look at names, you get a whole different meaning from it? Anyways, that con basically concludes this video. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for 114 subscribers now, 113. This means a lot to me. Really, it does. And until next video, later.